Hey folks, this is Matt once again, and welcome back to another review for the John Candy Marathon, and this time it is Splash, starring Tom Hanks, John Candy, Daryl Hannah, and Eugene Levy, directed by Ron Howard. This is a film he directed after the day after Night Shift with Michael Keaton, and I know when they were making the film, there was another mermaid film that was going to be made with Warren Beatty but then that film ultimately got shelved and this came out and was a surprise hit people did not think it's not that they thought they didn't think it would be a hit they didn't think it'd be that big of a hit it's one of those surprise hits that caught people off guard and it's definitely the film that jumped it helped jumpstart Tom Hanks and John Candy's career uh, Tom Hanks, I believe, before this had Bachelor Party. Uh, John Candy, he had the supporting role in Spaceballs. But this particularly uh, blew him up into bigger roles and bigger movies. And it's a nice little love story. Tom Hanks owns this little market to ship fruit and stuff out. His brother is played by John Tandy, who's a womanizer, and he's so excited that uh, his letter got printed in Penthouse. When they were kids, John Tandy would be the kid that would drop coins and look up girls' skirts while Tom Hanks is a little boy. They were going to Cape Cod, and he fell in the water and saw something there. When he didn't fell, he jumped in the water because he thought he saw something there, a little girl who just happened to be a mermaid. And many, many years later, Tom Hanks' character, he's just been dumped. And he doesn't know if love even exists or, you know, love can't happen with me or well, I die alone. He goes to Cape Cod. He's on this boat. One of the leads to another, he hits his head, and there is the grown up little girl he saw way before, grown up mermaid, played by Daryl Hannah, who saves him. When she's out of the water, she has legs. Like when she's that wet, and not that kind of wet. But when she's in the water, she'll have a tail. And Tom Hanks is like, oh yay! She think he thinks she's just a very beautiful lady who doesn't speak and saved him, and she goes off, and he can't stop thinking about her. And then she finds his wallet in the water and goes to New York, and she is heavily in love with him, and vice versa. And it's a it's a nice little love story. It's got a good heart to it. Goes at a good enough pace. The cast do a great job. Uh, Tom Hanks, he's likable in the film. It showed he could be a leading actor in the flick. John Candy's a lot of fun, even though he's a womanizing brother. He's not annoying. I didn't really think he was much of an asshole. He was just, you know, and if he is, he's a likable one. Uh, Daryl Hannah. Later on in the film, she learns English from watching TV, and she does a good job. She had done Blade Runner by this time. Eugene Levy, who was on SCTV with John Candy and would be in John Candy films like Before This Going Berserk, After This Armed and Dangerous. Eugene Levy does a good job as a guy who's trying to prove that she is a mermaid and ultimately does, and that's when you get to the third act where... Tom Hanks, Eugene Levy, John Tandy have to rescue her before she just dissected. And it's a nice fable. It's a nice fairy tale type of love story. And this is one of those movies that it seems like you can only make in the 80s because if you think about it, there's a lot of films in the 80s that have so crazy, weird ideas. Well, there are movies that have weird ideas now, but. The fact that they put, I mean, look at Snakes on a Plane, people say that's a weird idea. But they put enough budget, they put in the theaters, it wasn't 
made for ten bucks. Think about it. A guy falls in love with a woman who's a fish. Today's age, which weirdly enough, they're talking about remaking this film. <laughs> with like, the last time there was rumor of Channing Tatum, but that went away. And I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why they're remaking it. I think there was a made-for-TV movie called Splash 2. Like T.O.O. or um, I'm not watching it because John Candy's not in it. So it's not part of the John Candy marathon. But what I was getting at, a guy falls in love with a fish. A woman who is also a mermaid. If that's on the internet today, people would go, that's a dumb shit idea. Hollywood is out of ideas. Case in point, monster trucks. Now, I haven't seen the film. But even before, people are like, oh, that's a stupid idea. For a lot of people, the trailer didn't help. And I've never seen monster trucks, the new film itself, so I can't defend it or anything, but I'm just saying if on Ain't It Cool News or some other thing they said, a man falls in love with a mermaid it would be you getting a lot of shit before it came out same with Mannequin did you imagine that? Uh, well this woman, she's on this curse from way back in the days and this one guy She's a mannequin, but when this guy's around, she becomes human. So it's like this guy's in love with a mannequin. Or you look at Weekend of Bernie's. You think a film like Weekend of Bernie's? Well, there was that one with Daniel Radcliffe, where it's the guy using Daniel Radcliffe's dead body for the whole film. I forget what the hell it was called. I can look it up on IMDb after this, but what I'm just saying is that Back in the 80s, you would have a lot of these crazy ideas. Hey, put it on film. Why not? And not all the time, but quite a few times, they were become hits. Or hits, if I learned how to talk right. Hits. Splash was a hit. We did a Bernie's was a hit. Mannequin was a hit. But at the end of the day, you can't just have a crazy idea. You have to be told well. Like, some people hate Mannequin. I thought it was... For what it was supposed to be, well told with a good cast. Andrew McCarthy, Tim Tatral. We get a Bernie's. Crazy idea, but Andrew McCarthy, again. Jonathan Silverman, Terry Kaiser, Catherine Mary Stewart, they did a great job. This, you take your crazy idea, but you make people believe it because of Tom Haynes, Daryl Hannah, John Candy, Eugene Levy. You did good cast enough, and Ron Howard is a good director. I mean, you got Apollo 13, that's a really good one. Cocoon is a really good one. Uh, Willow is not a bad movie. I know it didn't do well when it came out, but Willow is not a bad movie. I mean, one day I like to review Willow. Not anytime soon, but one day. But yeah, Ron Howard's made a lot of good movies, and this is one of them. Night Shift isn't that bad of a movie. It's... Do I love every single Ron Howard film? No, but he has a good track record. I haven't seen. I'll be honest. I haven't seen the newer stuff he's done. The one he did with Chris Hemsworth. I, I forget what the hell it was called. I did. I could just look on Ron. I am to be, but I don't want to waste time on here. I did not see the new Tom Hanks one he did. That's a follow up to Angels and Demons. Ron Howard direct, directed the Dilemma. That was a piece of shit. That's probably the worst Ron Howard film I've seen. Like, that's Ron Howard doing comedy that's wrong. Just bad. Vince Vaughn, Kevin James, Winona Ryder. That's a bad comedy, in my opinion. But this works well. Good story. You know, good heart, I should say. Good heart for his love story. I already told you about the flashback at the beginning of the film with then Tom Hanks' his little boy thinks he sees something goes in. It's years later, and like I said, Candy, he goes in, and he decided to tell Tom Haynes, Hey, I got my letter printed in Penthouse. And I like when John Candy is messing with Tom Haynes like brothers do. Like he's giving kisses on Haynes, Tom Haynes' head. Or later on, he grabs in the headlock, and, Oh, Bone Crusher does this. And, you know, um, uh, almost like he's doing like an eye gouge thing. So, Tom Haynes, John Candy work well together. That's why I was so disappointed to watch Volunteers. 
which I'll get to. I know some people like volunteers. I don't. I saw that again. I did third chance I gave it, and I think that's a piece of shit, to be blunt and honest. While this was done well, and John Candy was used effectively in that in this movie. Tom Hanks, he does a good job. Again, he gets dumped, and I did, he goes, well, I guess she left because I didn't love her. And John Candy goes, that bitch. And Tom Hanks is confused. Like, How come I didn't love her? I don't understand. And there's like a wedding for one of his workers, and he's there, and people keep asking him about his girlfriend, and Tom Hanks keep making things up. And then Clint Howard has his cameo. He just says hi. And Tom Hanks goes, she left me, all right? She left me. You want the weather, too? <laughs> so, Tom Haynes, John Tanney are big reasons why this works. And Daryl Hannah, beautiful, decent enough actress. And I thought her and Tom Haynes had good chemistry with each other. And that's part of the reason, well, that's really the main reason why this works. Love Story's decent enough, and uh, the cast is good enough to carry the film and he jointly like I said goes to Cape Cod via taxi and when they send out like a strand of the water boat hits him and he gets saved and kissed by this beautiful woman and when you see certain swimming scenes with her and this tail that had to be put and her legs had to be tied together in order to put this thing on. Well done swimming scenes. I mean, it's, it's not going to be easy to swim with that thing on. But Daryl Hannah did a good job. And you see that it's her doing it, not a stunt double. It was her doing these scenes. And that had to be hard. It's hard enough swimming. But to swim with your legs like that, you know, I give credit to that. And... Like I said, she finds the wallet and she goes to New York. And she's naked at the Statue of Liberty. And the cops find her and get her and call Tom Haynes. And she he goes to her and immediately she starts kissing him. I'm like, man, who wouldn't want a woman like that? Without even talking, just automatically just kisses you. And all over you as if wants to hump you like a nymphomaniac. I mean, that's a guy's dream come true, you know? It's like the perfect lady. No conversation, just comes up, kisses you, and wants to hump you. I mean, um, that's not all it takes for a perfect weapon. But I'm just saying, that helps. There's a, I don't think there's too many guys who wouldn't want that. And at one point, Daryl Hannah leaves shopping because she sees it all on TV. And she just educated by watching TV all day at this mall, this store. And at one point, she buys clothes. And then a nice little love story between the two characters. And when John Tandy pops up, sees how Tom Hanks, how happy he is good rapport between the two like there's a moment where they're playing racquetball with each other and John Tandy's smoking the whole time and he tried to give advice and then Tom Hanks goes hey you took a date to one of your own weddings <laughs> which is a pretty funny thought that John Tandy's character would do that and even John Tanny tries to hit a racket ball and it bounces back, hits him in the head. Thought that was a good little physical comedy in that moment. And throughout the film, Eugene Levy's trying to follow Daryl Hannah and get her her legs wet so they'll turn to a tail to prove that he's not crazy. He tries to do it a few times, he messes up, and then this guy a guy will beat him up. Does you you douse my girlfriend's legs and just beats the shit out of Eugene Levy so each time you see Eugene Levy he has like a broken arm then he has like another cast and at one point Tom Haynes and Daryl Hannah are skating and say hey let's get married but one thing leads to another Eugene Levy is successful gets her legs drenched 
and everyone sees that she's a mermaid she's taken away for Tess and they even test Tom Hanks and there's a moment where he's completely naked and he's just covering himself with his hands over his, his dick and balls and he's like I'm not a fish but John Candy is able to get Tom Hanks away and he even tells me what you never seen a guy who slept with a fish but you have a good moment where Tom Hanks is complaining man you know every day people fall in love and I, I meet someone and she's a fish and John Candy gets pissed at Tom. And I thought this was a really good acting moment for John Candy. Because the thing with John, Mr. Candy, is that he's very funny, but he could do drama. I mean, I've seen JFK. I'm not going to review it for the John Candy Marathon because he's in it for like a couple minutes. And I'll wait if I ever do Oliver Stone Marathon one day, way, 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 one day down the road. But that proves he could do drama. Bits of Only the Lonely proves he can do drama. Bits of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles proves he can do drama. And even this moment here where he gets pissed and it's like, you know that whole thing you say about you know, people fall in love every day? It was bullshit. You know, it's a crock. Didn't you notice how happy you were? I did. You know, some will never be that happy. And then he admits, I'll never be that happy. And as John Candy knowing who he is and admitting that, hey, I'm never going to be as happy as you were with her. Like, try to tell him to snap the fuck out of it. And he does, and they deal with Eugene Levy, and the three of them go to rescue her. And you have this fun little scene where John Candy is trying to talk Swedish. And the subtitle's like, I have a 12 inch penis. And it's where like the guard understands Swedish is trying to get him. John Candy says, I have a twelve inch penis, like this with the subtitles say, and the guard lets him in, like, hey, good job. <laughs> That's the reason that they let him in. But yeah, Eugene Levy and Tom Hanks escape with the mermaid, and John Candy is there. Where you know some guys find out she's gone, and John Candy's like fishing in the empty tank. He's like, hey, how's it going? Uh, Eugene Levy helps them out, and pretty much, she goes, "If you come with me, you can't, you can't ever come back." And she starts swimming out, and then Tom Hanks says, "You know, screw it," and goes with her. I guess being with her, he kind of, she might have, I guess, gives him power to be able to breathe underwater, because he's underwater for a long time and doesn't need air. So I guess. I guess they didn't really explain how that worked, but okay, you know, whatever. Um, I guess just being with her, you can breathe underwater too, but they, the end credits is them swimming, and the last shot is they're swimming to an underwater city. And, hey, Tom Hanks, he'll never see, you know, John Candy, his brother, or anyone else again, but he's happy. He's got the woman that he loves, and he'll be happy. And the, the movie is... I wouldn't say it's extremely hilarious, like the funniest thing ever or anything. Sorry, just fixing something here in the meantime. But it's not like I want to say, oh man, it was busted gut laughter a minute. But it does have its chuckles, especially from John Candy. Tom Hanks gave me a few. But you have a nice little love story of a crazy idea, but it works well because the actors believe in it. The cast really helped the film. Ron Howard does a good job directing and using these actors to their abilities. And it has that little bit of fairy tale aspect of when it works well, we sort of put ourselves in the situation and you kind of smile like, no, I would do, maybe I would do that. Maybe I would make that choice too. And you have to live in an underwater city with a beautiful woman who loves you to death. Not a bad choice. But yeah, what makes the film work is, I've said this before, but it bears repeating, the cast really helped the film. 
and yeah, it proves Ron Howard is a good director, and he will prove that many times over. And the DVD, this was a DVD that was sent to me a very long time ago by a very nice guy who had contacted me on Facebook and sent me quite a few stuff a long time ago. He, just, he didn't ask for anything. He just wanted to do it because he was kind. This was many, many, many months ago, maybe even a year ago. It might have been that long. And this is a DVD from overseas, but I have a region-free DVD player. And it does have features. It has a commentary with Ron Howard, Brian Grazer, the producer, and I think the writers. It has Tom Haynes, Daryl Hannah audition footage. And it has about a 20 to 30 minute making of where you get interviews with Ron Howard, Tom Haynes, Daryl Hannah. Did you... Did he get Eugene Levy? I can't remember, but I know Tom Hanks and Dale Hanna and Ron Howard and the writers of the film and Brian Grazer producer, they all talked on the, the making of, making Splash. So, so obviously Tom Hanks is willing to do an inter interview. I guess not for the birds or the money pit, but he'll do it for Splash. He won't do it for other comedies he did back in the day, but I guess Splash is because, hey, it's Ron Howard, so I'll talk about it because of that. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's still a good movie. My favorite Tom Hanks film is always going to be The Burbs, but yeah. Splash is a good one. So, thanks for watching, take care, and see you on the next review for the John Candy Marathon. See you later.